Oh, oh my god. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Peter looks disgusting. All right. <laughs> so I'm just going to try to get the link to this so we can get it out. Yeah, can you tweet it? Yeah. Okay. Just trying to find this. Probably takes a minute to get up there. I think right. it does. Nice text, Alec. Thank you very much, <laughs> jerk. Yeah, big <Take> that. <laughs> what a jerk. Is there any way to block the screen so I don't have to look at him during the break? <laughs> I don't know if you can do that. Okay. Well, you just wait till I get back to Vancouver next week, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Are we still playing badminton? Yeah, they booked it uh, ooh, eight to ten, I think. Mm, the right, link good. is not posting. Up. Can we get drunk in that? Yeah, I don't see it either. <laughs> yeah. No. Nice. Drunk in badminton. Weird. Classic. That's Sunday. Oh. Monday. Monday. Okay. Maybe I might have it. No. Hi, Ian. Hey, how's it going, guys? <laughs> It's oh, going good, buddy. Go. I got How's it. it going with you? I'm uh, pretty good. All right. Very excited for this. Good, I did well. You did well? Nice. Yeah. What are you doing for summer? Hanging? Uh, for now, yeah. Um, in July, I'll take a class. I'm still a little bit behind from taking off for the show. Right. But... Yeah. All right, I'm just going to tweet out the link now for everyone. Cool. Get your retweet buttons ready. <laughs> oh, should I retweet it? Okay, hold on. Let me go to Twitter. Yeah, oh yeah. All right. To find everybody's <laughs> names here. Peter, we were the shield. Remember? I know. We <laughs> lost. Yeah, we did. We you suck. did. I but didn't. We won over the hearts of Big Brother Canada fans. And the internet. And the internet. Very good. All right. Did you tweet it? Yep, just tweeted it. All right, you think we're good to go? Should work. Retweet that for you. Awesome. I have also retweeted. Awesome. I have retweeted as well. <laughs> Very Ooh. nice. Did We're it. so efficient at this. <laughs> so We're efficient. Like it, right? Yeah. The link works, right? Is that. Mm -hmm. I'm um, assuming. Oh, the viewers are going so. up. I think so. Good. Yep. All Can right. See us now. Can they see me? What I'm doing there? <laughs> I think so. Oh, good. Hello, viewer. Hello, Sorry. internet. Hello, internet. <laughs> hey, okay. Everyone. You want to start now? No. No. <laughs> all right, we're gonna start. Okay, so hey guys, just want to say thank you all for agreeing to do this with Big Brother Daily. Uh, we're all super, super excited to have you all here. Even Big me? Brother 14 winner Ian Terry. <laughs> Hey, yes, Gus. Alec and Peter, otherwise known as the Shield. Look, it's our symbol. <laughs> shield. <laughs> Welcome. Stolen straight from wrestling. <laughs> so thank you for having us. Yeah, yeah, thanks for having us. Yes, yeah, thank you for having us, and thank you viewers for watching. Oh, well, yeah. mm, it's going to be a very fun show. Oh well. I hope so. We'll make it fun. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, another NL East ball cap. Oh, How are the Nationals doing? Horribly, I hope. <laughs> All Better right, first, first question. Okay, <laughs> first off, we're just wondering what you guys thought of the structure of Big Brother Canada as a whole, about the competitions, twists, things like that. Do you think there were too many twists, not enough, just enough? Were they fair? Way um, too many twists. Hmm. Too many not from your guys' perfect. perspective? I think I think I, I would agree with you from a viewership perspective in a way. Um, however, I think they needed to just throw everything uh, at the wall for this one. 
It was Big Brother Canada season one. Uh, I think there was a lot of nervous energy about whether it was just going to be a direct ripoff, whether it was going to fail, um, if it was just going to be a low rent version of the U.S. one. So yeah. I kind of don't mind that they did Twist City on us. Um, it was kind of stressful to be in that environment, but I get it from a production standpoint um, that they needed to just kind of give us something crazy every week to ensure that viewers were coming back. Yeah, we kind of convinced ourselves maybe around week two that it was kind of an amalgam of the UK version and the US version. And right. There was a yeah. lot of fan interaction in the UK version, so I kind of liked it. You know, we just kind of took it as it was. The first eviction went off fine, and then, and then every single subsequent eviction had some kind of twist or something. So, I mean, for us, it was super stressful, but I think as a viewer, you know, yeah, we didn't want another US ripoff or right. US clone. So, I, th I think the fan interaction is good. Ian? Yeah, I thought the twists were uh, a little bit too frequent for my liking. I would have liked a little bit more continuity to the game uh, as far as uh, I was interested in it. Um, I'm a big fan of the U.S. version more so than the other versions, so uh, I would have liked a more pure game for the first season. Right. And did you like how... Big Brother Canada essentially was not just a complete copy of the U.S. version. Like they incorporated not only BB UK, BB US, BB Australia. I did like that. I thought that it definitely had its own identity, uh, yeah. and I did like that it wasn't exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. I would have liked to see a shopping budget, like in the U.K. instead of a uh, have-not competition. I yeah. that a few times. I thought that would have been great. Um, have-not was kind of a ripoff of the U.S. in my opinion. I, right. I think if they would have dropped a shop in my game with the so season two, so That would have been sure. cool. Even though that was the competition they were all the most scared of. We were terrified yeah. to wake up Friday <laughs> yeah. for that have-not comp, man. Nobody wanted to go on slop. Even yeah. Andrew, who said that, oh, I can go on it for the whole season and I'll be fine, it kicked his butt on, like, day two or three in, just Which, like everybody else. All right, see, here's the thing. Our slop tasted like uh, kind of an oatmeal with a metallic aftertaste. However, <laughs> all of you seem to no. have yeah. a much more, you know, a much different reaction to it than I did. So yeah. was, what did yours taste like? Did it taste the same as ours, or is it entirely different? It tasted like a... I don't know, like a, I, I described it as like cabbage wrapped in dish towel with like a cardboard <laughs> box aftertaste. It was disgusting. It was, it like was a, awful. The only way I could get it down, um, and there were a couple days where I was like, I cannot eat this. I'm going to vomit every time. So once I figured out that I could blend it up with water and then switch mouthwash in right after, so I would just chug a, a shake and then mouthwash, rinse my mouth out. I only had to taste it as I was spitting out the mouthwash. Mm. So I only had like a split oh. second of tasting it. But once I, yeah, I mean, you start to miss it, though, it's weird. I was on it for three weeks, and then right. after that one week, I gained, like, a lot. And then they did this thing where they took all the food out of the cupboards and everything, and there was a morning where we all had to drink slop, and it was fine. I, I actually kind of liked it. It was weird. I had slop home syndrome. <laughs> I hated it. I hated every single day that I was on slop. As a picky eater, slop was the oh, worst, right. most terrifying thing for me in the entire house, and uh, to Jillian's credit, she kept me alive on slop the two weeks that I was on it, because she would make me the, sh the shakes that tasted actually halfway decent, and she would make me these slop chips, which were actually okay. They tasted like a multi-grain Tostito. You dip them in salsa, and they were actually edible. So Jillian literally kept me alive on slop, but slop is something that I would never want to do again. <laughs> and that morning that he's talking about, where we only had slop in the house, and everyone was like, oh, we can bond over all being have nots for the week. I was like, you guys could all go straight to hell, because if I'm on slop another week, I'm going to die. So you guys could carry my lifeless carcass out, if that's what you really want. But it's going to be rough. Ian lucked out and had Chef Joe. Uh, yes. uh, yeah, well, uh, the thing was, I barely ate the, the uh, slop, though. I always just ate the additional food uh, the three weeks I was on it. The first week, we didn't have one, but, I mean, the third week, I just ate cereal for every meal. Right. So. You guys had cereal? Oh. Yes, yes. Oh, cereal God. and salmon once. Um, right. Cereal so, yeah. was so Fruit good. Loops. Fruit Loops. Fruit Loops, yeah. had with uh, beaver tails and poutine, which was awesome. I love that week. That week wasn't even, like, slop week. But then the other two weeks, uh, the first week I was on it, we had nothing except for um, we had like a macaroni casserole, which is actually yeah. which is actually quite disgusting. But it was like the greatest thing I'd ever tasted. And then the second week we had the beaver salad and poutines. And then the third week we had no reward, 
know nothing, so it's just flop. Those, yeah. yeah, the additional foods are crazy, but the thing with Big Brother Canada is you never know what the hell they're going to do. Like, we were, we were expecting, you sure. know, Canada's choice for yeah. the first week, didn't get it, and then we got it, and then we expected it every week, and then we didn't get it. So it's kind of a nightmare, but, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, continuing on with that first question, what do you think was the biggest positive and the biggest negative about the first season? And what do you think they could improve for a second season? Well, I think um, Peter and I can agree on the biggest positive. Peter, what would you say was the biggest positive of the season? Um, <laughs> us? <Yeah. laughs> you got to say um, the shield. The, I, I, I don't know. I think that um, for next year, what I would like to see is more European influence. Like, I love the structure of the veto and HOH. I love that. that that's, that's what I like. But I want more secret missions. I want more, like, like uh, counter like missions. This. Um, you know, I, I would like to see something a little bit different on the have-not front, like like the as Alec alluded to earlier, the shopping budget. Just something that pushes it a little bit more as as an identity on its own. I, like Ian said, I like the purity of the game. I like the HOH and veto structure. That absolutely should stay. Um, but I, I would think some more like wackiness. Like they really put those guys through the ringer in the European version, specifically the UK one, which is the other one that I'm most familiar with. So you know, even though it sucks to be in it. It, it is kind of cool to, as a viewer to watch these guys just be like be completely like uh, you know up and down. It's a roller coaster of emotion. I think that's kind of cool. So if they add more like really wacky stuff uh, yeah. that, that's influenced from the UK, I think that would be that, uh, neat for season two. I think it would also be cool to set a precedent um, for you know not only the best game player to win, but also the most popular person to win. So kind of like a mixture of the winners of both UK and US versions. I think right. you should be rewarded for being someone that people actually enjoy watching. And not just because you make strategic moves, but because you're entertaining and you're a unique personality. So I think that would be good as well. Yeah. Okay. How about um, that phone in the storage room? Player, but we didn't have one. We didn't have like a Canada's Choice or whatever at the end, yeah. which is kind of a... Yeah. yeah. Sorry, uh, Yeah, so you, you guys didn't have like a, a viewer vote at the end, did you? No. 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 So no. that kind of that kind of bites. Um, yeah. I think that that's important uh, to a big weather season because it rewards not floating the whole time. Yeah. Right. Well, Peter, you won something, right? Didn't you win the something? Yeah, like through like website stuff, but I mean, I mean, it's not official sure. Big Brother stuff, so it's not really as important, right? I mean, right. I, I appreciate it definitely, but it's not like Big Brother official, so it, yeah, it doesn't have the same weight. Right. Okay, so let's get serious here for a second. Ian, uh, yes. what, are your, what are your thoughts on the gameplay of, you know, The Shield? <laughs> See, I, I was a big fan early on, uh, very early on. Um, I think uh, I could probably, I could probably uh, dig up some quotes somewhere where people were like, both of you two were like in the top ten North American Big Brother players all time at the very beginning. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, for a while, for a while, that's that's what. Until jury. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, until, and, until then, and then and then that's and then yeah the uh, the the fast forwards were kind of all uh, went yeah. to shit, if you will. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, uh, but I, I, overall, as a fan, I think that it it was good gameplay overall from both of you. Um, most Big Brother players are. Pretty bad. So, uh, <laughs> so to say to say you guys are above average, uh, I say doesn't give you enough credit. I'd say you're probably both top quarter, top third. That yeah, I feel like if we played it again, we probably wouldn't come sixth and eighth or fifth and seventh or whatever the hell it was. Um, mm -hmm. Like we can both pinpoint our mistakes in the game, which makes it right. it gives me a little bit solace because I know if I would have done certain moves differently, namely the instant eviction, we yeah. would have at least sure. gone to the final four. Yeah. Um, but, you know, live and learn, and um, I don't know, what did you think of the Quattro move, Ian? What did you think of Austin Kong? So I, I, I liked that. I, that's the thing. At the start, we, uh, I think uh, Rob and I were talking about it. We were like, this is a really good idea. I, we don't see anybody that's not in the Quattro winning. Um, maybe turned on, maybe turned on Tom a little too early, but I think it was just a, a victim of you know, circumstance with the way things played out that week. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but I, I thought it was a great idea. You guys positioned yourself well within it, so it was overall pretty good. 
Yeah. Yeah. We had our showmances as well, which, which that's a pretty good, <laughs> big, good yeah. idea. Yeah. At that point, it was all just about vote control, and the Tom thing happened because he made the Gary move to save him, and he right. didn't run it by any of us. And it was all right. supposed to be all for one, one for all, and like yeah. a majority rules thing. And he just did it, and then we we're like, uh oh, and See? then. We started to ask him questions. He was like, "Yo, if you guys are questioning me, then I'm going to come at you next week." And we're like, "What? What are you talking about?" And then we're like, "All right, Tom, like that's that's enough from you. Like, mm -hmm. adios." But uh, I would have yeah. liked to, to go on a few more weeks. Yeah, but I think absolutely. In theory, on. that that format where where the two of us versus the two of them in the end completely like I didn't like Tom at all. He knew that. Sure. Um, so it's very easy for us to keep the alliance secret because we never wanted to be around each other in the first place. I mean in theory it's great, but yeah, when you have somebody like that just kind of making unilateral moves it, it, and not kind of telling anyone else about it and then lying to your face when you ask him about it. Yeah. Yeah, he he, he had to go. So I by no means regret that um no, Tom not at all. Uh, did you think, Ian, that the shield yes. was a little too open on their final two deal at all? I mean, uh, towards the end, yes. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, I would have liked this, to have seen these two go uh, a lot further. Um, but like I said, around final nine, you know, got a little bit dicey. I, I would have liked to have seen more secret out of it. Right. Yeah, I know what you mean. There was a time when um, Andrew asked me in the hot tub, and he's like, what would you do if I was on the block against Peter? And I was like, I'm not going to lie to you, Andrew. I'd probably campaign to get you out of the house. <laughs> uh, I think that might have been a bad move. I mean, we were, um, especially with Andrew, I mean, I feel yeah. like he was kind of the unraveling of my own personal game where I would just tell him, basically, was... honest, like, I would withhold information from him, but I would be honest with the information that I gave. And I kind of overestimated our like personal relationship in the game. Yeah, big time. Yeah. yeah. By telling him that I would take Peter Final Two over him, that maybe wasn't sure. a play with, with someone like that, for sure. Yeah. yeah. I find you just got to tell people what they want to hear a lot of the yeah. times. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, uh, the fact that he believes Emmett and Jillian would take him over either one of them is just that kind of boggles my mind. Like, there's no yeah. 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 But that's because he's in love with Jillian, and he has a reason. <laughs> has a reason to trust them because he sees boobs, and then they're from, <laughs> he has no reason to trust two wacky freaking foil ball players from Vancouver. So. It's funny. Well, how about the Jira Alliance that you guys spoke of? What was the purpose of it, and can you just tell everyone who was involved? Um, the jury alliance had a few functions. Um, so when I when I left, um, I, I basically told Jillian, I was like, "Look, you're you're getting rid of a lot of people in a way that they're not gonna like, and it's because from our perspective, she was being wishy washy, and she would make a decision, and then she would flip on it six ways to Sunday, and then she would uh, inevitably come back, resulting in what would be a lie." I was like, "Look, Jill." If you I, I, stab me in the front, tell me that I'm a bad player and, or tell me that you need to get rid of me because I'm strong, whatever. But don't wishy-washy on it and then leave. Because 30 right. minutes before that live eviction, she comes to me. Jillian approaches me, non-provoked, and says, Peter, I don't know if I'm making the right decision. And then they flip-flop on it, her and Emmett, over the, the next half an hour. Oh, my and God. Like, and he keeps coming to me, and he's like, Pete, I think we got her. And then he'll come to me. No, you got to talk to her. And I'm like, okay, these, these are wishy-washy moves, and I don't like it. Stab right. me in the heart if you're going to do it, but don't go back and forth all the time. So I told her, I was like, look, Jill, if you're going to do this to me this way, then I'm not going to vote for you. Alec probably isn't. Topaz won't, and Gary won't, because that's the sequence of, like, you know, we all have influence over the other. And so I got there, like, she vote, uh, I got voted out because I told Emmett not to vote for me uh, because I didn't want to give Jillian that satisfaction. And I left, and when I was like, all right, well... I got there, and everyone was kind of mad at Jill, and nobody thought that she played a, a, a strong, confident game. Yes, she was lying and being duplicitous, but she would, she didn't own it. And we had a problem with that. And then, uh, basically, it just became an anyone-but-Jill scenario. We all really wanted to give it to Tala as a way to reclaim the game for ourselves. We were like, here we have this alliance. Alec, Peter, Topaz, Gary. We were the, the 4G sexual hurricanes. We wanted to have an alliance that didn't work in the house, work in jury, and it was going to be unprecedented, never happened before, and we were going to steal the game for ourselves and award to the person that we chose. 
And then uh, Tala got voted out, so we couldn't really do that. And then it was a Gary, Emmett, and Jillian situation. And even though Emmett probably played the best game, we were going to give it to Gary no matter what, unless he wasn't there. <laughs> there's, people, there's people that will disagree with that, give it to the best, you know, person who won competitions and, you know, found themselves in the end. However, you got to realize that jury management is a huge, huge, huge part of winning, not just making it there. Now, there's certain people that understood that, and there's certain people that didn't. Jillian is one person that had no idea how to manage the people that she was putting in the jury, especially more influential people. I mean, if you're telling people that basically have influence over the entire jury... My mic is kind of muted. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if you're, if you're basically just pissing them off. Like, Peter told her straight up, if you evict me right now, you're not going to win the game. Well, what happens when a member of the SHIELD goes into the jury after making a promise like that? They're going to make sure that doesn't happen. And Jillian just kind of runs away from the conversation, doesn't try and say, like, oh, Peter, I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry, it's best for my game. Here's strategically why it makes sense for me to get rid of you. If you can That's have, all I wanted. Yeah, if you can have a reason that makes sense to us as strategic players, then we'll understand that. And we may be more forgiving of you in the jury. But if it just seems like you're scared from a conversation, conversation that we have and you want to get rid of me now because I may or may not be coming after you even though you know neither of us really were at that point when we were evicted. Yeah. It really didn't it really didn't make sense. And like even in like uh goodbye messages and like it just didn't seem like she really gave a shit about like even accusing <laughs> the jury. So she didn't understand that part of the game, which makes sense because she's never watched it before. But right. I mean somebody like Tala actually did understand something like that and was yeah. like you know I don't know. It's it's just it's half of winning the game. You can get to the final it game. Is. You have to make sure the people that are in the jury vote for you. So yeah, that's what yeah. people don't understand. I mean, it's not. I, I finally understand it now, and I, I understand as a viewer. Say if it was Emmett and Gary in the final. As a fan, I'm watching the show, and I'm like, all right, well, Emmett played the best game. He should win. However, there's so many elements that viewers don't understand unless they're actually there. I mean, when you're in the jury, you want to award it to the person that you want to award it to. It's not like it's not like this person played the best game. We don't see that. We don't see the edited versions of the show. We only know what happened with us and our eviction and how we feel people have played the game. So the fan I'm watching it like, oh my god, if Emmett doesn't win this game, it's a travesty and the jury should be hanged. But right. you you don't understand it until you're there how much jury management actually plays into your getting a vote. What do you think about all this, Ian, the whole jury alliance and Well, I mean, uh, the thing is you know, whenever Survivor established this jury years ago, I, I, I'm i still not sure where we got this idea that the jury has to vote for who played the best game. Um, it was just put in place, right, to so that the person who is voting other people out ostensibly had to think, if I'm voting this person out, would they have any chance of voting for me in the end? I think it was just some byproduct of the outcome of the first season of Survivor where it was decided that the jury has to vote for who played the best game. Now, production's official stance on it is that that's what the jury is there to do, is to vote for who played the best game, at least in the U.S. version. But oh. I, I don't think that it is uh, necessarily that, and I, I don't think it has to be that. Um, they can vote for whoever they want. I would prefer it if that's kind of what it was, if that was how it was looked at at least somewhat. But, I mean, nobody is obligated to vote for who they think played the best. They can just vote for who they like the best. Yeah. First of all, let me put this out there as well. We don't think, or at least I don't think, that Jillian played a better game than Gary. Let me throw it out there. I'm, I'm talking an Emmett situation where if Emmett's in the final okay. two, then he wins it over Gary, and I would be pissed off if that didn't happen. Regardless, that, that's a scenario which can happen hypothetical. Forget about it. But Jillian versus Gary in the final two, I, I have no regrets over my vote. I don't think Jillian played a better game than Gary. I think Gary had to win the hardest competition of all, which is a popularity contest in Gary UK, and I like that. Gary beat me, Popaz, and AJ in what I consider the hardest competition for anyone to win, getting voted back in by the public because they like you. And when Gary was in there the first time, he made some great moves. When Gary was in there after after going into jury, he also made some great yeah. moves. Yeah. I think honestly, Jillian won four competitions, but the people in jury didn't give a shit about the competition. Peter and I were throwing them. Popat said she was throwing them until the one she won. And AJ didn't. Do you think AJ cares about competition wins? No. And, and in your speech, when you're asked not to mention your competition wins, and you 
mention it as your only yeah. like plea for the jury, you don't deserve to win the money. Yeah. Sorry. Fair enough. Sorry, well, uh, for me, like on my my question to Jillian, um, obviously I like my my objective was to make her uncomfortable and for it to be jarring, um, so that she wouldn't pay attention <laughs> to the question. So um, I like Jillian as a person. I think she's a fantastic person. But if I start my question with "You're an idiot." then she's going to be completely off a rocker and not know what to do. And that's exactly what I wanted. However, my question was valid. Tell me why you're there without using Emmett or HOHs. And she went through and talked about Emmett and HOHs. All that I wanted Jillian to do is say, Peter, you were stupid to trust me. Um, I right. stabbed you in the back. You were a bad player, um, whatever. It. All I wanted her to do is like own her villainous. Right. And right. I would have voted for her. I would have taken Gary's key out of my box and threw it away. If she would have just been honest in that moment, I vote for her. Nobody in the world could have convinced me to not vote for her. That's what Alec and I said all the time. If she's in the diary room going, ah, ha, ha, I got them again. They're so yeah. stupid to believe me. And not being like, oh, I have to lie. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah. That's not a strong player to me. If you're bold about it, if you own it, then I'll vote for you any day of the week. If you're wishy-washy about it, I'm not going to. I asked her that question, and she was wishy-washy on her answer. She rambled for 10 minutes. All, she, all I wanted her to do was say, Peter, no, you're the idiot because you trusted me, and then I vote yeah. for her. Fair I enough. So I have another question for Alec. Getting back to that popularity vote thing, if you were up against Gary in the final two, would you try and use that against him that he got in second chance? And Absolutely. Why yes. the hell would I care about that? I would, <laughs> I would talk about my own game. Oh, wait, did I get voted back in? Or, wait, hold on. I'm just no, in the just... final two. He gets voted back in. Okay. I don't yes. Mean, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely not. I don't, I don't think that's a down at all. I think the game that I played, I was confident in. If I'm making moves from behind the scenes, not getting blood on my hand, the jury's not going to hate me. So I don't have to bring up some, you know, popularity contest or whatever. I don't okay. think he used it to his advantage like he should have. But if I'm in the final two, I'm going to know goddamn well why I'm in the final two. And it's not because I won four competitions without a face to the point for. It's because yeah. I played the best game. And I'm going to elaborate that as best I can. And I'm sure Peter would agree with me on that one. Yeah, completely. Ian, do you agree with that? I would have I would have used it. I mean, uh, <laughs> I I I think the one life thing is a valid argument. Um, yeah. fair enough. Yeah. So I I certainly would have used it. I I did use it in my my speech mm -hmm. against Dan even though it was right. a different circumstance. Right. Actually, you know what? Now that I'm now that I'm rethinking about it, if I did have time to do it, you got to think also who's in the jury. And somebody like Andrew, somebody like Emmett, somebody like Jillian, who you strongly believe that that's the case, you shouldn't be given a second chance. Right. Yeah, I probably would use it. I'd probably use it against them, not actually believing it myself, but just trying to sway right. the jury about it. It but depends honestly, who's there. Yeah. Yeah. It, it would. Yeah. It would. It would have to depend who was in the jury with uh, voting to to give this vote. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now. You know, the Shield has received a ton of criticism for being bitter jury members. Do you guys feel that's justified? No. I, I really don't. Like, when I left the game, I was, I was fine. Like, I, I walked into jury, and I was all right. I was there just to have fun, um, hang out with my buddy for two weeks, and then go back and, uh, you know, make a vote. Um, I, I, like I said, I don't dislike Jillian as a person at all. I just disagreed with her philosophy when it came to the game. And, you know, everybody says those speeches don't matter at the end. It really mattered to me. All I wanted her to do was be honest. I feel strongly that Gary played a very good game, and uh, he was deserving of uh, the win. But, I mean, Jillian was there. She was never even put on the block. She was safe. She was positionally great for so long. I don't care about comps, so that wasn't a thing for me. But I wouldn't say that I'm a bitter jury at all. I can understand how that came across on television. I, I yeah. can now because I've seen it, and I, and I look like a very nice, um, happy-go-lucky guy in the show. Um, yeah. But if you remember my very first intro, I'm like, look, I don't like people. People are yep. stupid. I don't like them at all. And Blow I'm doing walkers. that in the diary room. It just didn't make the show. So even though it may have been surprising to the that. live audience, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, that's me. I was calling people idiot, stupid, useless, um, terrible players the whole game. Uh, mm -hmm. and it just happened to be that the last memory that people have of me is me going, you're an idiot. But yeah. again, yeah. this was, it had to serve a point. And I, I think if you paid attention to what I was doing in live feeds, then you would understand that because yeah. um, I, did, you know, I like to play mind games with people and that was my last mind game. Yeah. yeah, we're there to entertain, and that's what Peter was doing with his question. I mean, it was a, obviously something that people are going to talk about and be shocked by. And, uh, like, it's important for us to, it's 
afford to get to season two. Yeah, he could have been yeah. nice and whatever. It didn't matter. But, you know, you're putting on a show at the end of the day. But, yeah, back to that, like, we, Peter and I got some very favorable edits in the in the earlier parts of the show. Like, we were, like, the, the fun guys who weren't out to, like, hurt people. We were the nice ones. But, honestly, we were, like, I was so shocked to see my edits up until the end of the eviction because... I was not. I was not very nice in that place, and it just got shown after the intimidation. What the yeah. hell is going on here? Why do I like this person on the <laughs> uh, So, you know, Dan actually went on the record and said that he felt a lot of the jury's questions, including your guys, uh, were pointless and not really game related. Uh, what did you think of them, Ian? I mean, they're allowed to ask whatever they want, so uh, yeah. I. Felt that their questions were just fine. I, I mean, do I necessarily agree with the reasoning that they put forth to vote for who they wanted to? Yeah. No, not really. But I mean, that's their choice, and no one says you have to vote a certain way. So, yeah. Why would you have voted for Jillian? What, My what, only thing is, I, I, I would have I would have evaluated the game on three pillars. Um, first, I would have looked at you know some sort of strategic positioning thing. Uh, and the fact that she hadn't been voted out, I would give her the point in that category. Gary was utterly more likable. That's quite obvious. So I'd give him the point there. So then it would come down to competitions, which they were tied. What's that noise? I don't uh, know. <laughs> they, they were uh, tied about 4-4, four, four, I think, in competition wins. Um, however, I would just give it to her as her play. She won more per play, whereas he had two tries. Uh, the two live thing bothered me. I mean, you guys can think of it if, if that's a competition and he won it, then, I mean, you can give it to him there, but I I would have seen her as... I've never had to vote on a jury, though, but I, I would have voted mm -hmm. for Julian. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the only irrelevant question that I can think of off the top of my head was AJ's. <laughs> AJ's question was completely irrelevant. I, I, I wouldn't consider my uh, question yeah. irrelevant at all. I, I, I legitimately wanted to know. Yeah, why I mean, she, your question was perfectly legitimate. Yeah, without yours... using Emmett or HOHs. I mean, and that, that's that's fair. Yeah, the AJ one, AJ's was, yeah, that, that one didn't make any sense <laughs> at all. That was, that, that that was appropriate yeah, for AJ, it. though. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, but I, I, to Ian, what, to what you were saying about the, like evaluating on three pillars, that, that's actually really good. I, I don't mind that as a like you if you use um, comps as part of a criteria. Oh, it can't be all. It can't be yeah. all. I, I I actually really like that. I I, I think that that was um, that that would be something that I would I, I would have liked to kind of uh, come to on my own before, and then maybe I would have reevaluated a little bit because I mean part of it is like. It's not Gary's fault that um, production had a twist where somebody comes back in at right. final sure. four. I completely, dis as a fan, as a Pierce, whatever, I disagree that someone should be brought back to make four or five. I think I it's way too late. Too late. Um, but it happened. And you know what? You have to play the game that you know is in front of you, not based on one that has been played before. So it's not Gary's fault. And when he comes back in... He probably played better than anybody else. So, I mean, you have to give credit where credit is due, even though I, I, I do largely yeah. agree with what you were saying, Ian. Great. So, Ian, you would have voted for Jillian? Or? I would have, but again, I, I never had any sort of personal beef with her, so it's yeah. a lot easier for me to say that. Yeah. It's, a lot easier, <laughs> it's a lot easier for me to say, say you know, Four months, five months later, that if I got voted out of that final three, I'd vote for Dan. But ten minutes after it happened, you know, I don't know that that's what I would do. So yeah. Yeah. it's a lot, right. lot different when you're actually in the situation. I feel like. Yeah. Well, I think I, I'm a bigger fan of making premeditated moves. So if she yes. has been kind of plotting to do these moves, um, okay. maybe even like minutes before she won into it, but it, it's literally instantaneous with her. Like something can set her off, and mm -hmm. she doesn't have her mind made up. So if Never. She starts, yeah, if she starts <laughs> to get scared, like I'm not a big fan of making moves because you're scared. I'm a big fan of making yeah. moves because it, it makes sense for you to do them. Yeah. Now, the, like I felt, and I don't know, I don't know who else felt this, but I felt that the moves she was making were not premeditated. They were basically emotional, and that's not the way I was playing the game. And so that's what I, that's how I wrote it. Yeah. Right. So Gary was never Gary was never scared to do Yes. Anything. She put up Tom and Liza, and you know, one of those two isn't going home. So. That, well, right. uh, unless there's a twist, which there was. So they both went home that same night. But he was not afraid to do that. I mean, it may not have been 100% his move. There may have been some mm -hmm. people behind it. 
but you know, <laughs> he was going to get the retribution. He wasn't afraid, and he just really wanted to make it exciting and entertaining, and that's, yeah. that's admirable mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. Another one for Ian, since he got to sure. watch it all on TV. Who did you think played the best game? Doesn't necessarily have to be someone from the final two. And what did you think about Emmett's game? I, I think it was Emmett. Um, yeah, I have to give it to him. He was the Canadian Hayden, uh, is yeah. what I called him all yeah. summer. Absolutely. Um, he he had clearly over the long term the most firm grasp on the uh, going ones in the house. Um, he was competitively decent. Uh, and uh, I think that he he overall had had the best idea of, of what was happening. So I, I yeah. think he overall played the best game. My one beef with with Emmett is that he underestimated the randomness of the competition. So he never thought that Tala was capable of winning a competition. He never thought AJ was capable of winning a competition. He he would evict his allies because he thought that eventually they might come after. Him. I'm using my own eviction sure. here. Uh, there was no way that. Peter or myself were coming after him, especially at that point. Yeah. However, Tala had mentioned a few times that she was interested in taking out the big target. So he at least would have gone on the block had she won HOH before they made this, you know, whatever uh, plan to oust him. Now, I don't know if it, it, it would make sense for him to even evict Andrew at that point because Andrew wasn't coming after him either. Gary and Tala were much more likely to put him on the block um, than, than uh, Andrew was, but he evicted me, he evicted Peter, and he evicted uh, Andrew, if you consider those yeah. moves. And so those are three people that I would have thought were allies to his at that point. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So I mean, yes, his girlfriend won all these competitions and he was saved because he's not going to put him up. But I mean, I feel like if somebody like Paula or Gary pulled out an HOH towards the end, or you know, Peter pulls out an HOH towards the end, then he may have been in a, in a little bit of trouble because I, I didn't really agree with the people that he was evicting at that time. But you know what? He partnered with a strong competitor, I guess. So he he was positionally perfect for right? almost the entire yes. game, though. So you have to give him credit uh, for that. And Emmett was probably Absolutely. the bet. Like he was, he always had. Jillian and, uh, and Andrew on one side of him, and Alec and I on the other side of him. Yeah. And even though he had maybe internally turned on Alec and I in week four or five or something like that for the Tom thing, um, we never turned on him. And that's we literally trusted Emmett to a fault. And that just goes to show um, how you know he was able to generate trust with everybody in the house, save for basically Tala. And even he still was able to do it with her. So yeah, mm-hmm. you really have to tip your hat to Emmett because um, he was a huge target. He got put up right away, and then he was yeah. never put up again uh, because he had all these people protecting him, and that's just being positionally smart. So I, I definitely uh, will um, always compliment him for that. For a guy with no personality, he played a great social game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, Emmett says that he doesn't regret this, but do you think uh, his biggest mistake was evicting Tala over Gary? Clearly. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, he would have question. He would have lost to Tala, so maybe not. Well, I mean, that's that's, well, I don't think he would have lost final HOH to her, and it yeah, would have been I, I, between I, her and Jill. Yeah, and then I agree. I agree. Yeah. I understand his rationale, and I actually would defend Emmett on that move because there is an endurance component of the HOH. So their plan was sure. for Jillian to win the endurance component, him to win yeah. the physical, and it would be him and Jillian in the final two, and they yeah. or the final part of the HOH, and they take each other. I think that's I think that's a fine move. Paula was better at endurance comps than, than Gary was, and I understand his logic. So I don't think that's enough. I still think Jillian could have beaten Tala in the endurance, though. Yeah, she could have, but she would have had a much easier route to doing so against Gary. Yeah, in my opinion. Mm, or in the opinion so of, so. The, of what had happened. Well, the endurance yeah. comps in in our season, the first one, the tree one, it was her and Paula in the end, and in the iceberg one, you see you see a little bit of it, but you didn't actually see how much longer Tala lasted than the three guys. Like, yeah. it was me, Emmett, and Peter, and she lasted way longer than, than Emmett, who was the last guy out. Yeah. Um, no, I was so the last guy out, and I threw it. <laughs> I could have been out there forever. I was holding oh, on no, to my no, leg, no, man. You the last guy out. Emmett was huge. That's why you were the last guy out. But anyway, you can see his logic there, and I don't, I don't necessarily think it was a bad thing. I don't think yeah. either of them would have taken him to the final two, and... I mean, Tala, yeah, she she choked under pressure, but I mean that final HOH is pretty much a coin flip. Like I was it doing is. it at home, and I was like, what the hell? I have no idea. I live in this season. How am I supposed to know all this? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't think that's a bad move. I think I think Emmett was he had kind of positioned himself in a, in a way that he was too big of a target at that point. Nobody would have taken. Mm-hmm. I don't and know. Well, probably would have. So. 
Yeah, I think Emmett was really banking on the endurance comp being like more similar to the two that they'd seen already. Because <laughs> I would one, agree with that. Yeah. With that one, Tala had no chance. But yeah, if it was exactly. like the two earlier ones, she would have. Yeah, there's no way to know that when you're in the half. Like, yeah. You go on what you're... Yeah. Again, that's the randomness of it. You you have to you, you know you can assume and think maybe it's going to be this type of comp, but then you get out there and it's something totally different. And yeah, anybody can really win at any time. Like it's at least with BBUSA, you know, they typically follow a formula with the competitions every season, so they could guess what was coming up. But you know, yeah. with Big Brother Canada, you guys couldn't really do that. No, I mean we tried. I mean, like we tried to use basically the uh, Ian season as the template of like, well, here's what we might maybe expect, maybe yeah. some type of this. Um, and and but sometimes we were we were sort of there. And like, you see, some challenges were similar. Yeah. Um, sure. But uh, yeah, like you, you really never can tell. Tala was second in a lot of comps and yeah. easily could have pulled one out at the end. Like you really do never know. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that, was a, that was a, it was weird because that's how Andrew thought, that's how Jillian thought, and that's how Emmett thought. They really thought they had no, I mean, Tala had no chance in any competition. But it's like, what did AJ say in the diary room about trail mix? Who, who the fuck knows that? <laughs> like, that's the most random thing in the entire world. The yeah. reason these people want it is because people like me and Peter and, and Popaz were just throwing it. So yeah. it's like they're, they're basically playing against each other every time. They think they're such yeah. great comp winners because we didn't give a shit. Exactly. Okay, so <laughs> for the next thing, I'm going to do a screen share so you guys can all see this. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> My man. My man. Topaz has voted for Jillian. What a monumental goof. That is a fuck up. Yeah, a monumental goof is putting it lightly. Yeah. See, I, I've always wanted that to happen. No! <laughs> the one that I was involved in. All right, yes. <laughs> I remember you saying that you always wanted something like that to happen. So, what as do you As long as I wasn't involved, <laughs> yeah, as long right. as I didn't have money riding on it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> what What were you thinking when and, you saw this all go down? Uh, when I, the first thing I honestly thought was actually, I think when we were in the house, um, I think Dan and I actually one time were sitting in the backyard. We thought it was going to be a closer vote than it actually was. Right. And he says like. What if Ashley, just after voting, hands, just goes, oh, we were supposed to vote for who we wanted to win? Uh, uh, so that was the, the first thing that immediately sprang into my mind. Uh, you know, God bless Ashley. We all like her. But, um, but uh, that, was, that was the first thing I thought of. Uh, so. I do remember that from your season, you saying that. Yes. Dick was saying that it happened before. You, did, you remember what Dick was saying? You were Oh uh, yeah, oh, Dick God. said that it happened. What like one person made an accidental vote, but it, it wasn't it, like it didn't affect the outcome. Oh really? Did yeah, I don't really remember. Uh, supposedly Jamaica. Uh, yeah, really? maybe. Okay. Yeah. Oh but yeah. It had no effect on the outcome. There, yeah. there's always been rumors, uh, of course, of Survivor Amazon. Uh, this Christy accidentally yeah. voting for uh, Jenna to win when she. Meant to vote for Matt because she Matt. was deaf and could not understand. Oh no uh, way! That's the, that's, that's wow. the rumor. That's, oh, was that I mean, it? I I don't know if that's, that's true at thing, all, yeah. but I, oh. that's, that's what I've heard. Like the deaf girl because she was deaf and couldn't oh, understand. Oh yeah, that could be right. <laughs> uh, did you guys think that Big Brother Canada owed it to Gary to maybe reverse Topaz vote or? No, no not owed owed it. Shit show. <laughs> No, uh, I mean, yeah. they, they are very clear on the rules, as yeah. Emmett and Jillian pointed out yeah. constantly. You're voting for who you want to win. Maybe right. we needed Jeff Probst there to let us know. <laughs> Maybe Arissa wasn't firm enough. <laughs> I don't Chen. know. But you, 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 you need to vote for the person that you want to win. And Topaz just got lost in the moment. She got lost in the lights. She was the Absolutely. most nervous person going into that show. She was terrified uh, backstage. Mm -hmm. And then we get out there, and we have our little shtick that we're going to do. She's got her 150% speech, and, like, she's not a performer. You know, yeah. like, this is all kind of new to her. And to do that in the moment and then get the key in, like, it looks so simple on television. Right. And you know what? She just, she, you have to you look at the camera and, like, get your line. And 
if you're not used to that, it can be hard, and she just didn't look in her box, and it's an, it's an honest mistake. But no, they didn't owe it to Gary to reverse it. She made a mistake, and that's just TV for you. I exactly. mean, great television. Um, right. Like I said, as soon as Topaz put her uh, hand up to say, um, wait, hold on a second, they so should have written them the check for season two. <laughs> I agree. I thought, yeah, I thought, I, I will never believe that she thought she was voting for who she thought should be convicted. I, like, no. Yeah, that's, I, I no. She just didn't look. Like, right. that's, that's an easy thing to say afterwards, but honestly, I think it was just she goofed. She was thinking about Jillian in her head yeah. when she sank her 150% seat and she, and yeah. she really does feel bad about it. Like I shared a hotel room with her that night and you can tell that she was just devastated by it. You know, she didn't go to press, she went to see the psychologist right away. Like it Aww. wasn't yeah, she was she was pretty devastated about it. And uh, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I think it could happen to anybody, you know, you're nervous up there and you know, I checked my block and AJ's block <laughs> to make sure yeah. Yeah. that we had voted for the right person afterwards. So you know, you yeah. know how it's going to happen. Yeah, but I don't think they should have been reversed. I thought it was, I mean, it Can you believe that some of the fans actually think that it was staged? I can believe that. I mean, yeah, like, you can. Yeah. If you, it, if you watch it, you can see her reaction. She's not crying. She, she's like, yeah. wait, hold on. I think she's just in shock, though. She was I mean, shocked. I mean, yeah. I understand what, yeah. they're, what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, moving on. Yeah, yeah, you guys saw that Dan visited the house after you guys had left. How did you feel that when you first found that out and realized that you missed that visit and that opportunity? It broke my heart. I was so <laughs> upset. And then later I found out that uh, Dan picked uh, Anil and I as two people who, who we thought would have a chance to win on the first episode. I was like, oh, I just keep letting this guy down. I was like, uh. oh, it felt so bad. And then, and then he hates me because I'm a bitter juror. I'm like, oh, I just continually, <laughs> continually let Dale, the guy I like. And then in the live show, I said that Will was better than him. Yeah. I'm like, oh, he's going to hate me forever. But, I mean, no, like, I, I like Dan a lot. Uh, he's one of my favorite players of all time. Um, obviously, I look up to him as a big brother player. And when I found out that he was in the house, I even joked about it in, like, week two. I'm like... Alec, like, we're going to go out, and then freaking Will and Dan are going to show up and be like, where are the guys that are supposed to be us? <laughs> and that's what happened. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I don't know. I was really mad. Yeah, I actually, I, I went in there not really, like, caring for Dan's game too much. Like, I watched your season, and I thought you deserved it, and I thought Thank you, you kind of took a lot of heat for, you know, being on Dan's season. And I was like, yeah. yeah. Did you watch the, the clip that I saw? I sent it after dark where me, Peter, and Anil are actually talking about it. And I think like, I, I saw something about it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I, I was defending you. Because, like, I really do think that Dan is a perfect example of not managing the jury property. I That's mean, what we were going to ask you guys well, next. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I don't mean to take any shots at Dan's game. And, and I love what he does for the Big Brother community and all that. But I, I really thought that it was Ian's season, and I think he was kind of lost in Dan's second playing of, of the game, which I didn't I I said that it was bitter jury last year for Dan. Again, from a fan perspective, I was like, oh, man, he made all the best moves. How didn't he win? But Ian obviously played the best game of that season because he didn't make anybody mad at him, and he made a lot of really good moves. So it's like, again, from because a lot of people would send that to me and be like, oh, you say bitter jury, Dan sure. lost, and now you're a bitter juror. And I'm like, you know what? Mm -hmm. It's two completely different perspectives. I said that the bitter jury thing about Ian and Dan's final as a fan – and yeah. then, because I was seeing Dan make all these crazy moves and they kept keeping him around. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, how is this happening? But then when you're in it, it's completely different. Exactly. Now I realize that Ian played, like, by a considerable margin, the best game of his season. But Dan and played the most H -H entertaining too. game. How do you win four HOHs and get no blood in your hands towards the end? Right. Four HOHs and two videos. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. Come on. Yeah. Dan gets all the blood on his hands. I mean, that, that was like, uh, uh, yeah. in a way, a game that we were trying to play as well. We just wanted to keep people around that would make these moves and get all the blood on their hands. It's like, one of the reasons we wanted to keep Andrew is because we knew we could get Gary out. We didn't know it would happen the following week, that kind of stuff. Right. But, like, that was his main target was Gary, and we were like, we don't want to go out for Gary. We're going to look like assholes. Hold that, going to hate me. We need somebody around that's going to take this guy out. Emmett didn't want to do it. And so yeah. we need him around. Sure. Like, we wanted to have other people making moves for us so that we would be just positioned right. good, but, you know, fine at the end. And we were even going to say, like, if one of us went out, just yeah. stage, like, an argument at the end to make it seem like I wasn't going to vote for Peter. But, I mean, towards the end, we kind of realized that wasn't, nobody would buy that. Anyway. But, I mean, you have to be jury conscious when you're doing it. And, I mean, like, 
bitter dry. I mean, everybody bitter if, if the person they don't like wins the game, sure. or or somebody votes against them or whatever. Like you look at Emmett's speech at the end, and he's like, you you, you can't uh, like she won so many comps, but then if you ask him, oh yeah, I lost that comp to Gary, but it's a fifty fifty. Yeah. Know, it, 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 it's dumb how these competitions sure. are random. Well, if you think their competitions are random, don't use it as an excuse to vote for yeah. someone. Like, that, that's bitterness. Like, all right, yeah, I'm bitter because I lost a 50-50, but now I'm going to be a hypocrite and say that Jillian deserves if you want all these competitions, mm-hmm. which are 50-50 in your own words. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of them are... Uh, I, f- I feel like to, to some of the competitions, to an extent, there is the element of just not choking. I mean, yeah. I, yeah. I remember in the first week, Mike Boogie said, uh, you know, if, if you get nominated, what, what's your plan? What, what are you going to do? Because I feel like you're going to get nominated. He, I, go, I don't know, win the veto? He's like, oh, no, no, don't, don't pin your hopes on winning a competition because it could be, you know, rolling a ball into a hole. Yeah. And sure yeah. enough, Exactly. Sure enough, four weeks later, you have a game that actually was rolling a ball <laughs> into a hole. Uh, yeah. Uh, That's awesome. uh, yeah, but uh, but I, I mean, I feel like there is the factor of not choking because I think that's part of it. But but a lot of them are very random. Yeah. yeah. Even after I won, I won the maze one, and I was like, I'm yeah. glad this made air because I was like, there's a random element in some teams. If I would have gotten left in the maze, I would have lost. Exactly. Like, even, sure. even like, I'm not being an immigrant, the ones that I won were completely random. Like, who, who practices how to push a block of ice to a, to a line <laughs> unless, you play, exactly. unless you're a curler, and it's completely different even if you curl. It, 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 makes, it, it is ran- very random. And yeah. I never wanted to rely on a, on a competition win, which, I mean, to my detriment, because I could have won the best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it got in my mindset, I was like, yeah, I need to, I need to win with this, not with like whatever the hell you use to win a win a competition, but yeah, I don't know. I I don't. That's why I didn't respect comp wins and didn't think it was a great reason to vote for me. Yeah, I I wanted to go through the entire thing without winning a single comp, to be honest, because I was like, I want to be able to save myself through the social connections that I've made and yeah. not by some random thing. You know, do it do it with this and with this and not with you know rolling a ball into a hole or pushing a block of ice or finding letters in a bunch of uh, styrofoam. Uh, you know, that's, that's how we approached it. And it's like, you know, Alec and I are both gigantic Will Kirby fans and Will Kirby did it in season two without vetoes. He got himself on the wall all the time without vetoes. Absolutely. You know, it's, that's, you know, maybe you can say to that, we were trying to play Will's game, but it was just, we were trying to be good socially and did, we didn't want to rely on an element of randomness and maybe we sure. were too much in the other direction maybe we should have tried on the comps a little bit more or something um, but you know what that's that's how we approach it and, and I'm still okay with that yeah. yeah okay back to the whole Dan thing and the integration of BBUSA house guests into the show do you feel that that was a good thing to do some fans were saying they want it to be Canada's own don't want anything to do with the American show and some loved it why were there no Big Brother UK people like at all on the on the show? It, it, it does smack of Big Brother US Part Two, in my opinion, bad for the format of Big Brother Canada. I mean, we don't want it to be a clone. So if they had some Big Brother UK people on there as well as Big Brother US people, I don't think that's necessarily a problem. I know production wants to bring in like you know US viewership, but. I, I mean, I think I would have liked to see that as a fan of, of the UK game as well. But yeah, no, mm-hmm. we always we always speculated that in the final six they bring the final six in the US season fourteen in uh, for like a competition like yeah. that like, type thing. And we always thought that would have been great. I mean, for yeah. us in the house, like if we had met Dan, it would have been great. It would have been awesome to see idolize people like Dan and Ian and you know Talita too. Talita says, uh, love it and love you, Ian. That was a nice joke. <laughs> But yeah, no, I thought I thought that was good. Um, and they didn't have too much. Like, it's not like they played a huge role in the actual outcome of the game. I know they tried to play <laughs> that up on the episode, but I really don't think that had too much to do with Emmett's decision to evict Ainsley. I think that was really kind of the angle they were trying to pull on the show. That somehow Dan had got into Emmett's gear and convinced him to, you know, evict Ainsley or something. But I had done that the week prior. I'm the one who told Emmett that if Andrew stays around, he's going to win. I put that in his ear, yeah. and then they. Flipped it because that was the because Jillian was gonna put uh, Tala and I up and I was like okay so if Andrew wins veto and pulls Tala off then Emmett goes up and then they made it so that it was Andrew and I on the block so they they were they were aware of Andrew's 
potential to get to the end because I put it in their ear, and I think Dan may have just reinforced it um, for Emmett because obviously he's a voice of authority. Now, to the thing about the U.S. influencer, like the U.S. Char like characters appearing on our, ver our version of the show, it's a bridge season. Um, so, you know, we're the first of the Canadian one. However, uh, we're going to be watched by people who are the Canadian fans who are used to watching the American version, and they're going to like the American characters. Like, I called us BBUS 14.5, because that's basically <laughs> what we were. Yeah, and, sure. You know, so you have to have those kind of, like, bridging characters. Like, maybe that influence will be diminished if they get a season two, and then it'll be just purely Canadian stuff. They'll bring back people from season one, whatever, um, as, like, you know, people to commentate on. But for this season, from a production standpoint, you need those, like, big characters. You need Rachel and Ian and Hayden and Dan and all these – and Janelle and all these people yeah. to comment and be like, here, we're the experts, and we're talking about the, the Canadian version because that's what Canadian fans who are used to watching the American season are going to want to yeah. see. It kind of legitimizes Absolutely. it as well. It's like, all right, yeah. these people yeah. that are that have played before are respecting this game as you know, like another season of Big Brother rather than some shitty knockoff. Yeah, uh, right. Okay, I, I actually really like it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for Ian, then what is the perception sure. amongst people, Big Brother US host guests? What did you see the season as another US type of season, or does that? Uh, I saw it as its own Canada thing. I mean, obviously, it's going to have elements of ours, uh, just because um, you know. I, I guess you guys kind of consider our house guests to be canon, so yes. uh, so uh, yeah. I mean, I, I saw it as its own thing, but I mean, it definitely has its influences. So uh, that's kind of what it's based off of. Yeah, I agree. Um, so obviously, Big Brother Fifteen is coming up. What would you guys like to see? Like, just new house guests or the shield. <laughs> Us. <That's> not allowed. <laughs> Someday yeah, they'll do guys. U.S. and Canada. Somehow. I feel like, uh, that would be cool. I feel like in the U.S. TV 15, they may, like, can't, TV Canada may have shot them in the foot if, if the viewers liked all the quits. And, right. you know, having people on the edge of their seat, like literally every eviction show, not knowing what's going to happen, instant eviction, they may, have to, they may have to ramp it up in order to, or they may feel like they have to ramp it up in order to keep people interested after watching yeah. the, you know, the season fire. Um, yeah, I mean, that's just my take on it. There was a lot of twists, and if the viewers liked that, I don't know, I've, I've kind of been holed up in my basement since I came back, so I haven't really talked to a lot of viewers, <laughs> but if they enjoyed all those twists, then they might have to, you know, ramp it up a little bit in the, in the in 15. Yeah, do you think Big Brother Canada actually put some pressure on BBUS, Ian? I don't think there's enough overlap in the audience, so I would say no. Okay. Yeah. But in terms of Alex, as, as, points, uh, go ahead. As far as Americans that watch the Canadian version, I'm, I mean, I know tons of Canadians watch our version. Right. But, oh, yeah. No, yeah. That, that, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But back to what Alec was saying, I think the casual viewers enjoyed the twist, but the people that are watching the feeds all the time, they didn't really care for them very much. No. Oh, that was the perception from yeah. like, yes. the hardcore feed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. I mean, it's fair. But again, from the TV version of it, we right. kind of need it to be everything all at once, all the time. Right. And we get it. Um, mm -hmm. it, 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 it. It's tough to be the guinea pigs for that, but it was it was fun too. So, I mean, you can't... I, I have no yeah. real complaints about that kind of stuff. And the thing is, if you, if you are a, a very, very strategic person, say, say you're an Emmett, let's take ourselves out of the game, you're going to be in a great position no matter what twist comes your way. Like, there's yeah. a reason people are pulling him into the storage room every time they quit, because he's mm -hmm. the one that, that has positioned himself to be fine even if exactly. the Exactly. I love the, I love the Emilio eviction thing, because I was like, oh, uh, like, some people are like, it could have been any of us up there. No, sure, shit no. wasn't going to be me, because I, I was in a great position with every single person in the house. Yeah. Uh, and Emilio mm -hmm. wasn't, and Emilio was going to go the next week anyway. So if Emilio blanked the twist, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, but you, that was, he was an expert on a top of lot for most people in, in the past. So if you position mm -hmm. yourself in a, in a way that, you know, you're fine no matter what happens, then you, you really shouldn't be blaming the twist. Yeah. Uh, Ian, how would you have dealt sure. with some of the, the twists that happened to these guys? Um, well, mm, I don't know. Again, I like a pure game, but, yeah. I mean, obviously I knew there was going to be some sort of main twist going into my season and uh, uh, that's how Big Brother US is now. There's just yeah. some sort of twist that runs the first three or four weeks and that's it. Um, 
So I think the one thing that would have thrown me for a loop was how the Canadian version, there wasn't that overall theme twist, but just kind mm -hmm. of random ones that popped up uh, all over the place. Um, yeah. That said, I, I did okay with the twists. I handled them pretty well, I think. So. I agree. I mean, I, I think uh, maybe I would have done fine with Canadian twists. Yeah, if you're a good player <laughs> of the game, the twist shouldn't matter. And I agree. I don't, I don't respect yeah. the, like, the argument that you blame the twist. You know, because we're playing a game, and we all knew the popularity was game. We thought we thought Canada was going to be given an H O H and yeah. be able to evict whoever they want. And that was the most scary thing for me because I just assumed that everyone hated me the whole time, which in the end they did. But like that, <laughs> that was the game that we were playing. We all kind of knew that Canadians were going to have a huge impact on the on the game. And so Gary coming back, though it was late, you know, he kind of knew something like that was going to happen. And the people that were unpopular or not, you know. On the radar, in my, in my opinion, I don't think Jillian was really on the radar for much of the show. She won the competition, but it looked like Emmett was puppeteering her the entire time. So I mean, if there was a twist, like say Canada was given HOH, I, ugh, I don't know. I think yeah. like that will be a twist for next. Season. I they think want, probably. They want, yeah, they want Canadians to get involved, which I think yeah. is great. I mean, whatever. There's other ways to get involved in the game, though. I don't think they need to be directly impacting things like that. True. Yeah. Well, I agree. We don't. We shouldn't turn into a big brother in the U.S. One. I mean, that was. was a yeah, that's too yeah. much. But no. I mean, it, it should be an amalgam. This is what this is what I was hoping it would be. I was hoping it would be a mix of Big Brother U.S. and Big Brother U.S. Mm -hmm. And there would be some strategic elements where you know, if you were strategic enough and played the U.S. game well enough, you get the end. But if you were very popular, like the U.K. version, you stay in because the fans wanted to see you. I think I think that's great. That's just my own personal opinion. Um, like you guys are mentioning pure games, but I mean, it's Big Brother Canada and not Big Brother West Part Two. So I don't know what a pure game for Big Brother Canada is. Mm -hmm. right. Sure. Okay. So something that all three of you have in common is you obviously love the game a lot. So could you all comment on what the experience meant to you and if it met your expectations? Oh, yeah. uh, we'll let the winner go first. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it was, uh, it was everything I, I expected it to be. Um, I went into the house with uh, one goal, and that was to not be the first person out. Yeah. After eight hours, I uh, successfully reached my goal. So. Um, Jody, poor Jody. Yes, that that was a shame, but um. But that, that was my goal going in, and I, I wasn't the first one evicted after eight hours. So, um, you know, I just wanted to take it as it comes and have a good time with it. And, uh, you know, the fact that I won is really icing on the cake for me. So mm -hmm. I was really awesome, and uh, I would do it again in a heartbeat. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I completely agree that it was everything that I thought it was going to be in more – um, I felt literally at home in there. I felt that that was an environment that uh, um, you, you could be free to be yourself because it was so um, fake. The, the, more, the more fictional the reality was in there, the more I felt like I could be myself. And that was something that you don't really get in the real world. And right. um, that was comforting for me. The fact that you look up and there's lights and there's cameras yes. everywhere to me felt more like home. And, and, yeah. and, and I, I never, I, I, they could have just put me in there forever. And, and I wouldn't have minded because I, I get that you can compartmentalize the fact that, you know, there is this outside world, but then when you're in there, it doesn't matter. The only other people that matter are your other housemates. And, um, you know, even though I didn't go quite as far as I would have liked, I'm, I'm okay with that because I'm okay with being a victim of the house because ultimately the house always wins and, and, and I can rationalize that to myself and understand where I went wrong. But as an experience, it's probably the best thing that I've ever done in my entire life and I don't sure. think... Uh, and in the near future, anything will ever top that. It, it was perfect. Yeah. It was unbelievable. Oh, it's all downhill. Sorry? It's all, it's all downhill. downhill from here. <laughs> yeah, it's all downhill. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you, you can't describe it, and yet everybody who is in there knows exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. But it, it just, it, it's just, it, it's always stressful and it's always fun, and that's why we love it so much. Yeah. yeah. It's one of those things where you, you go in thinking that you're going to be a certain way and thinking, you know, you're going to be so calm and cool and collected. And then within the first, um, like Ian, I guess, was in the first eight hours, we were in a similar position because, you know, somebody picks up a phone and all of a sudden two people are up on the sure. clock. One of us is going home, we think, then a veto is played, then we, don't, we have no idea what the hell is going on. And it's like you, you cling to some 
semblance of a home or people that make you feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. That's why me and Peter were so uh, good, such good friends right off the bat because, you know, he reminded me of people that I would hang out with at home and we got along so well. And, like, I called him Topaz originally because she was, like, she felt, she made me feel, like, safe, I guess. I have no idea. But you go in there thinking a certain way and then you get in there and it's just, like, it's the most stressful environment I've ever been in. And then slowly, as you build these relationships, it starts to become easier and easier and easier. And then, like Peter said, you feel at home. And you feel yeah. like, you know, being ripped from this environment would be devastating because it's yeah. all you really know. And coming back into the real world, like it's strange. Um, I was in Jury for three weeks, but in, in Jury, you also are around just a few people and you don't see anyone else from outside either. So, like, being in like a crowded room full of people is just weird the shit out of me now. I'm just very, very, yeah. very awkward. It's very strange. Yeah. It's, like, it's one of those things you won't, you won't understand until you're in that environment and only until like, you ever actually know what that's like. got another thing to add on to that, sort of. Um, Alec, when you were campaigning, when you were on the block there before you got evicted, Andrew kept saying he didn't really believe you that you weren't there for the money. He said, you're stupid if you're not there for the money. you got to be lying and all that. So, so can you just comment on that? Yeah, Andrew has his own way of thinking, and basically my my whole game unraveled because I had so much trust in him, and I saw a lot of myself in him. I, I've said before, me and Peter are such good friends, but if there's one person I'm most similar to, it's Andrew, and I really don't think he feels the same way about me. So um, I was telling him full on, this, I'm not here for the money, I'm here to win. Yeah. And I want, yeah. you know, I just want to yeah. be the winner. It's not about yeah. money. And he just he didn't understand it. And yeah. right. like, to his credit, I mean, that's fine. He thinks in a certain way. Um, I don't. And, and I was trying to relate that to him. He just didn't, he didn't understand it. And for that's... me, I was, I was giving him something that was honest and true. Yeah. But it was just very difficult to not be able to break through to him and, re and have him realize that I was being sincere with the things that I was saying. And that's um, something all three of you guys have in common, yeah. right? Like, I, I would have done it for a handshake and a gift certificate to McDonald's for $10. <laughs> I really yeah. would have. I yeah. didn't care that it was on television. I didn't care that there was a car. I didn't care that there was a uh, gift certificate to the brick. I didn't care that it was $100,000. You could have literally just given me a handshake, and I still would have signed up. I would have left the world for three months. Because like I said uh, to Emmett, I was like, everybody else left the real world to escape in here for a little while. I left the real world to come home in there, and I would have stayed forever, and I didn't, like, would the money have gotten rid of my colossal student loan debt? Yes. But was I there for the money? Was the money a factor? No, it wasn't. I was there because I love it. That's what real fans appreciate, too, so thank you guys for that. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Did the cameras ever bother any of you guys at all? No, never. You're always aware of them, but... <laughs> yeah. There was a little freak out that I had of uh, Tom opening the shower door on me. Oh, right. oh, yeah, that me. one for you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. That was just uh, the cameras didn't bother me. You didn't really notice them until you know something like that happens where I was like, uh, and it's just an emotional kind of roller coaster in there. So mm -hmm. you know you get a thought in your head and it just kind of snowballs and snowballs and snowballs. And I was hoping that something like that would just go away. And live theaters would just not even take notice of it, and it would be fine. But yeah. then, you know, that started getting spread around, and I started becoming conscious of like, the real world outside. And, you know, I have to be a professor one day, and if you're Googling your professor's name, and see his dick hanging out, like, I want that to be, like, a reputation of other people's um, And so, yeah, that was the only time the cameras really bothered me, that, you know, when you leave the place, it's like, it's weird not having them around. So, like, yes, it is. a little, mm -hmm. like, and the microphones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for me that was the thing is I when I would get out of the house I would check for my mic to make sure yeah, I yeah. had it on me for yeah. a while. Did you guys <laughs> yeah, do that as well? Yes, we did. Yeah. Every day. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And maybe we're just like Maybe I'm just weird, but every single like every dream I have, like I'm always back in there doing yeah. like interacting with the same like fourteen people. And yeah, it's hard to it's hard to shake that. Yeah. yeah, they become your family after a while, and like, like I, I say, you know, you, you might like some of your family members sometimes more than others, um, but they're still your family and you still love them. Like I, I feel like I can say a positive thing about every single person that was in that cast, no matter how close I am to them at this point. Um, you know, whether I liked them at the time at various points in the show, 
they're, they're your family, and that's that's just how you deal with family. And our family was just on camera for three months. Yeah. Okay, so I think we're, we're going to do some uh, Twitter questions now. Okay. Okay, so uh, Ian, uh, sure. do you have any advice auditioning for Big Brother? Uh, be yourself, be completely yourself, but uh, be an exaggerated version of yourself is my advice. Yeah. Yeah. Know what character you can add to the show. Mm -hmm. My advice would be um, enter, enter a profession that the producers would find interesting. I always wanted to be on Big Brother, and I thought it would be awesome if a social psychologist was on Big Brother because it's a social experiment. Right. Um, and then eventually I was cast, I think, purely because of my profession. You know, I, I have a bit of a personality, but honestly, I think they just wanted, like, they think it's cool to have a social psychologist on there. I think an astronaut would do quite well on that show. I think, you know, some kind of person that's in, like, an isolated environment for, for a living would do very well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, be an astronaut. <laughs> you actually got a tweet from uh, Liza here, and she wants Alec to put on a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't saying that in the house. Liza. That's <laughs> amazing. Yeah, Liza was a weird one. She wanted to like play all the guys, but me and Emmett were already in Showman, so that's why she really hated us so much. But yeah, she doesn't want me to put that shirt on. She's like, she probably wants Peter to take his shirt off. <laughs> Be quiet, Alec! <laughs> okay, but now a question there for for uh, Peter and Alec. Whose edit were you most surprised by when you saw it after watching some episodes? No I was, one's... I was of, like, the us or everybody? everybody? Everyone. No one's really. I mean, we had a pretty good pulse on, like, how everybody was as a person. I bet they were surprised by, like, me in the diary room, I would suspect, because I was, like... I was my internet character in the diary room, and I was never that in the house at all. I was very quiet and, um, you know, just friendly and stuff. Uh, but no, I was not I haven't been surprised by anything that I've seen in the show at all, except for um, Emmett's uh, internal turn on Alec and I sooner than I thought. But yeah. no, I'm not surprised about anyone said it. Yeah, that was weird how much Emmett turned on us, especially in mm -hmm. my eviction week. He was like. It just didn't make sense because we kind of kept up the quattro after Tom left. Yeah. Like in his mind, he just got paranoid and we were like, oh, these guys are coming after me. I think actually I was surprised by my own edit and how good it was in the first portion of the show. And then after the instant eviction, I feel like people maybe should have seen that coming, but they didn't see, like, you know, the edits weren't there for me until the actual turn. I think you start mm -hmm. to see a little bit in the once you get my music taken away, and then the information comes and it's like, oh, this guy, what did he do? Like, why is he such an asshole? But like, uh, I don't know. It, it, I'm surprised. I'm surprised that they were able to make me look like a, a good person. And like, <laughs> you are a good person. <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't know. Uh, at our Averix ninety eight wants to know, Ian, if you were yes. in the same season as. Alec and Peter, would mm -hmm. you have wanted to join the Shield Alliance? Yes. Good question. Yes. Of yeah. Course. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Easily. Easily. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I I have a, a thing. I think that uh, you know I, yeah. I, I like oh. to see. You know, I I feel like um, you know, had we not had the coaches twist, my initial instinct for my season would have just been to make a guys alliance. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. that uh. I think that making a good guys alliance is a good way to go through the game. I feel like uh, that's you know ideally what I, I wanted to do in my season. However, we were forced into alliances that we didn't necessarily want from the start. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that that's probably the way to go. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wanted to form that quattro. They don't show it, but it was like I got scared because I thought Tom was coming after me because I stopped talking to him after he went on the block, and then I come into a conversation in the bathroom where he's like. Oh, it's weird how people don't talk to you when you're on the block, but now when you win veto, everybody's coming kissing your ass. And he was talking basically about me, and I had walked in on that conversation, and then he walked out. So I was like, all right, I hate this guy, one, he's a dick, and two, everyone thinks he doesn't like me. And so I brought him and Emmett into the hot tub, and I was like, Emmett, like, Tom, we need to form this alliance. Like, me and Peter are super close. You guys are super close. Mm -hmm. We both don't like each other. Nobody would ever suspect that us two and you two were working together. This right. is the perfect time to form like a secret alliance where we can stay away from each other and we'll be fine. Um, I didn't actually, I didn't actually think that it would be like I wanted to do this nuance season. I didn't necessarily need it to be guys or girls. Like I thought it could have been fine either way. 
but it yeah. really turned out well that Tom was such a, you know, he had a lot of influence over people in that house. We were able to ride him to the, you know, until he started getting involved by him crazy. Yeah. Uh, at Ty Tiger Vixen wants to know that now people are aware of the throw comp strategy. Um, do you think there's going to be any backlash or targeting in the future seasons on people suspected of doing so? No, I mean, because it's been going forever. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was about to say. This is yeah. this is not new. You know? Exactly. <laughs> it's uh, like w when you're in the moment, it's hard to like because you know it's not obvious that you're throwing them. You tell people in the diary room, I threw that cup, it was great. But in the moment, it's like, oh, I fell down, or I couldn't hold on, or I couldn't like, push the it's, it's, it's only obvious that, the, yeah, that you're throwing it if you're shaking his hand. Oh, that, yeah, that one was bad. That one I disagreed that. with. He should have hit the wrong button. Hit the wrong button. Yeah. Stupid move. That was terrible. <laughs> what an idiot. Andrew? <laughs> yeah. Come on, funny, dude. Though, right? I think that's funny. Yeah. funny. Never yeah. seen that before. Ian, who was throwing competitions in your season? Dan, Dan and, and me I, for for a while. I mean, I think the only competition that I wholeheartedly tried in was during the, the pre-jury phase were the pirate ship, the taco ship one, and yeah. um, the the first one with the bed because obviously I didn't want to go home the first right. time. Yeah. So, yeah. So that Anyone that's team based, I think people try on. Like, yeah. I think everybody tries on the have not ones. Yeah, there's there's no reason to throw this. Yeah. No. Okay. Uh, Smelly Gleek wants to know if you three were in an alliance, what would you guys name it? Huh. Oh, Geek Chic, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I can yeah. do with that. Something like that. I don't know. I'm yeah. pretty dorky. Peter name it. Clearly, Peter is like. <laughs> I didn't know that wrestling was involved in every single thing he was doing. I actually thought that I had come up with this. <laughs> I had convinced myself in my head that I was like, oh, I came up with a symbol. He came up with a name. Yeah, maybe I wouldn't let Peter name it. It would be some wrestling thing that I didn't know about it until after I got out. Who had the Not better cool. name? The the Quack Pack or the Shield? I think the Shield was definitely the better name. <laughs> yeah. Why not, bro? You uh, think, yeah. in, the, in the rub a dub scrub challenge that we were all wearing like duck shorts and stuff and I told Emmett I was like Emmett are we on official quack packers now because we're these duck shorts and we're pretty yeah. late in the game so yeah. but I guess not uh, would you guys like to see in the future if Big Brother Canada continues on uh, like a US versus Canada season yes yes we would mm, cool. I would sure, I guess. In there, maybe man. like a short one for maybe like a month <laughs> why, and then we'll why not full thing all three months. Do it. I mean, Why not, Ian? Yeah. In in I don't know. I, yeah, I guess we could do that. Just not sort of a short season. Just like a little thing to hold us over. I kind of like uh, the American He's version. He'd lose to the shield. That would be an intense <laughs> Maybe. All Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> don't I would, afraid I would love shield. to see it in a few years. Yeah. I, I really would. Sure. As a fan, I would love, whether I'm involved or not, as a fan, I would love to see that. As someone who's watched it forever, um, I think it would be really cool. Mm -hmm. If you guys could be on it, who would you want to be in the house with you from the U.S. version? That's probably, a good I would, question. I, would I, mean, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want Will in it because I would just throw everything to it. <laughs> I'd be like, here, Will, you can vote me out this week. <laughs> yeah, um, I think Danielle Reyes would be awesome. Mm -hmm. She's um, good. Yeah. Ian, um, I don't know. I'd, I'd have to kind of see, like, see the list of because I mean they brought a lot of people like all like All Stars, which was a long time ago, had so many classic characters. Yeah. And you know, like, yes, there's been some um, characters in recent seasons who would definitely be in the equation um, to be brought back. Uh, but I don't know. And like, we're only one season in, so like that that's a sure. tough, tough question. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, at mm -hmm. some point, I would I would absolutely love to see it, even if it is an abridged season. Like the BBUK uh, celebrity ones, which are like a yeah. month or something. Yeah, they're, they're really short. Yeah. That was a question here for Peter. Someone wants to know your opinion on the whole Tom and Liza relationship. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Um, in, in the show. <laughs> or that elastic present off? day. <laughs> yeah, this doesn't this doesn't go off. <laughs> we'll go with both. That's not a Liza thing, though. You were doing that before. Um, yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. So I'll 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 explain this first, and then I'll. Okay. So I I like to have stuff to fidget with. It helps me think. So I brought in like a regular like elastic band to like just to play with and stuff, and it broke. And I was like, ooh, that sucks. So then Liza gave me this one, 
and then it eventually served as a reminder of her slash to play with my head, not my heart, um, slash to give me something to play with. So it served a lot of functions. But overall, it ended up just being like a her thing. I would point to it every week as a reminder of like me to her kind of thing. Right. Um, the relationship between Tom and Liza in the house, I was fully aware of. I understood that it benefited her to be with him because he was a much stronger player in the eyes of the house um, than I was. Like Tom was pulling a lot of strings, even though it was, they were all like kind of quattro moves or whatever. Um, so I understood that her being with him was completely beneficial. Now, her and I got close, and then that created some complicated things because... Alex didn't trust Liza at all. Emmett mm -hmm. definitely didn't trust Liza at all. And so I was in this weird position where I was like, no, I think I can get her. Like, I, I think that I can, like, control her boat or whatever. And they just didn't believe me. Um, but at the same time, I was uh, having, like, a romantic attachment to her, which I did not expect in the house because we were very intellectually compatible. And that was really appealing to me. So I was kind of in this, like, Ugh, what do I do? I want to be with this girl all day, all the time, but that's going to be a bad game move. So that was hard. And then they leave. They both leave. And then I see her coming in, and her and Tom have matching tattoos. And I'm like, well, good. Uh -oh. This is great oh, news good. for me. And, uh, and then, but then she throws up her elastic. I'm like, well, now what's going on? So it continues to be complicated to this day. But my opinion of their relationship in the show was that it was beneficial for both of them to be together to a point because ultimately it ended up in them both being evicted in the same night. Yeah. Okay. Do any of you have any final thoughts you'd like to share with the fans? Anything we didn't cover that you'd like to talk about? Yeah. Yeah. Who do you think, uh, Peter, of all the U.S. people, who do you think Peter is? What? Is what most like yeah, most, is that you said? similar to yeah. In big US. Yeah. Um, hmm. I mean, I feel like there are obvious comparisons drawn to me that I don't know yeah. that that's yeah. really fair. On the TV uh, Tropes website, I am yes. you. Yeah. They yeah. say yeah. that I'm you. Right. Which is I fun. Am. I'll take that as a call of okay. all day, okay. man. Yes, yes. I thought, all the first right. couple that days, I actually that. accidentally referred to him as Ian. I was like, hey, Ian. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's funny. But yeah, I would probably say me. Um, I, the thing that I heard very early on was that uh, someone said, Peter is a hybrid of uh, me, Eric Stein, and uh, uh, Dan. I can see it. I'll yeah. take it. I, thought. I will I take that, that all day. That, that, is, yes. that is high praise. That is, I like, which, those which, are which I, I feel players. like that's good. So, yeah. I can see that. Definitely. How about... Uh, how about Alec? What do you think? Who's he compared to, Ian? Um, Kent from season two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, 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 like a Roddy type from Big Brother 3. Gonna go way okay. back. Oh, Roddy. Okay, right. yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. Roddy. <laughs> Who would you like to be compared to, Alec? <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to be compared to Anna. I would like to no. think that I was like my own unique character. Yeah. Or like somebody from the UK, like maybe Aaron from. Uh, See that that's a, a very apt comparison there. I think. Did you watch that? Uh, yeah. I I had seen parts of it. Yeah. He, he had a showman, and then they it kind of fell yeah. apart, and then they both nominated each other, and then like he was crying a lot, and like you never really like who the hell is this guy basically? Uh, yeah, I, I would prefer not to be compared to anybody. I know people think that I'm like. Comparing myself to Will in the game, the audience was definitely no. They were like, "Oh, he's got a showman, it's very Will Kirby." Like, no, that that happened organically. When you go in there, you have no you can't strategize in the first couple of days. It's your first time playing. You're basically just trying not to die in the first. Week. <laughs> so, like, that, all those things happen organically. I would, I would, I was, I don't know. I treated the, the diary room like a UK diary room. So I was like, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna be honest and, and explain my emotional journey in the house. Which is which is dumb, and like they don't show any of my diary rooms for the first like twelve episodes until, <laughs> um, and that's probably why because I was just like, oh, uh, like I feel today I feel like resentful towards this person, and it's like mm -hmm. nobody wants to do that shit in the US format at all. But yeah, I, I don't sure. know. I would, it'd be nice to be my own person. Yeah. Any more final thoughts, or is that pretty much it? Uh, yeah, I think we basically covered everything. Yeah. Pretty much good. Anything to say to yeah. your fans out there before we go? 
We love you very much and keep tweeting us because we keep <laughs> tweeting back. We are yes. very active on social media. Yeah. Um, love tweets, hate tweets. We respond to pretty much all of them. <laughs> um, we yep. appreciate any and all support. Um, we understand that it's just a game and, and we're characters, but we're also people too. And um, we like to have fun with it because if we were in your position, we'd want to have fun with it too. Um, yeah. So uh, you, there's going to be a lot more from Alec and I coming in the very near future. So um, keep your eyes peeled to Twitter and YouTube um, for more Shield soon. Everyone's going to be watching BB15. Yes. yes. Oh, absolutely. Awesome. I'm very excited. We want, to do, we want to do an after show called the Why Not Show. Yeah. We just kind of talk <laughs> about. And I think, uh, well, yeah, whatever. Maybe we'll do it. I hope we do. And uh, oh, we will. For That's BB15. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. For BB15. Are you guys still going to do commentary for the BB Canada episodes? Uh, yeah, once I get back to Vancouver, yeah. that's something that I would really like to do. I think uh, Tom got a lot of credit for the, uh, I mean, sorry, uh, Emmett got a lot of credit for the Tom and Liza nomination on the mm -hmm. episode. That was one edit I was very surprised with, so yeah, we could, we could have some inside stuff to say. Um, All after right. I get evicted, I don't know what the hell I'll talk about. Maybe I'll talk about Yeah. Okay, thank you guys all so, so much for your time and your input. Thank you. For really, having really appreciate it. <laughs> thanks right, for joining yeah, us. Thanks for having me. All right. Bye. Goodbye, Internet. <laughs> yeah. Goodbye. Bye, Internet. Keep thanks believing. again, guys. Shield. <laughs> Quack pack, shield. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> it's better than evil dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> all right. Bye, See you later. Bye. See ya. Good talking with you. Yep.